Hey there, welcome to the Common Climber YouTube channel and our three-part video series on rope specs and UIAA standards. There's actually a lot of information to dig into and that's why we've broken it up into three different videos. So part one of the video is middle markers. We'll also address the sheath, uh, which includes the sheath percentage and the slippage and rope diameter. The second video is going to dig into falls and factor two falls. The final video, we dig into impact force, dynamic and static elongation, and rope weight and length. Rope specs refer to all of the information that you can see on a label of a new climbing rope. This information will be really helpful in determining what type of rope you'd like to buy because there are certain things to consider with different circumstances. Let's dig into part one here. First and foremost, always want to buy a rope that's been tested and meets UIAA standards for safety. First thing you're going to want to check on a label is that it has something like this. Now a little bit of background on the UIAA. Um, basically, UIAA standards are the only globally recognized standards for rope testing. And um, if you really like to dig into the details, you can find the standards at this website right here, uiaa.org safety. This website actually also has some um, really useful information, um, other safety information, so it's worth spending a little time checking out. So let's start off with the middle marker. You should know that not all ropes are sold with middle markers. Um, knowing the halfway point of a rope is a really critical safety item, uh, especially for things like rappelling um, or how much, knowing how much rope remains relative to the length of the climb. Checking out our label here, you can see that the FIX Siriana rope does have a middle marker. There's um, some important tips to know about middle markers here. Many middle markers are just a darker color added to the rope using an approved dye. These middle markers often disappear as the rope gets dirty and worn. It actually really helps to select a rope color that's going to have good contrast with the middle marker. If you buy a rope that doesn't have a middle marker or your middle marker fades, you can buy a safe product designed for ropes called the Beal Rope Marker. You definitely do not want to use a Sharpie or a regular marker or an unapproved dye because um, these are solvent based chemicals and they could compromise the integrity of your rope. Another great option instead of a middle marker is a bi pattern rope where half of the rope has a different pattern. With these ropes, you see the pattern change at the halfway point. This is a huge advantage of bi-pattern ropes. The midpoint's never going to fade. Bi-pattern ropes are actually my preferred choice, uh, but they are much more expensive. Um, something to be aware of, though, if you do go for a bi-pattern rope, is that if the patterns on each of the two halves of the rope are too similar, it can be hard to tell the difference between the two halves. Here are two examples of a bi-pattern rope, one with a more distinct pattern change and one that's a little more difficult to tell, especially as the rope gets dirty. The UIA says the middle mark cannot be more than plus or minus 1% off, so for a 70 meter rope, that's 7 tenths of a meter or just over two feet. This is flanking from the middle. And just to be aware, There is about a foot, foot and a half difference uh, between ends. This isn't critical. I think it's part of the, or within the acceptable tolerance, etc. But just something to be aware of. Middle marks are never perfect. Lengths are never perfect. So just be careful. Now let's move on to the sheath. So the exterior of the rope is called the sheath. And not only does the sheath bear the color of the rope or the bi-pattern design, the sheath also protects the core from abrasion. The core makes up the majority of the rope and you can think of it as the workhorse catching your falls. 
you want this workhorse, of course, to be protected. So the higher percentage of the rope that is comprised of the sheath, the more it's gonna hold up to abrasion. You might hear claims that the higher the sheath percentage, the thicker the rope, but that's not necessarily true nowadays. If you explore the specs of different ropes, you'll actually see quite a bit of variability. There's an interplay between the sheath, the core, the diameter, the weight, uh, and the number of factor two falls a rope can support. Manufacturers adjust these elements to create ropes that meet different climbing needs. As far as UIAA certification goes, the rope needs to show the percentage of the rope comprised by the sheath. And the FIX Suryana rope has a sheath percentage of 37%. Now let's put this into a little bit of context. Um, climbing rope sheath percentages range from 30 to 40%. When you're buying a rope, one of the important elements to consider is its diameter or thickness. As you can see here, the Fix Suriana has a diameter of uh, 9.6 millimeters. And I'm just gonna do a side note that the comma is used instead of a period over in Europe, and this rope is made in Spain. So it is 9.6 millimeters. And this is a fairly standard rope thickness for today's, what I'm gonna call regular use ropes. You can get much thicker ropes closer to 10 millimeters if you want a rope that's gonna last longer and you're not concerned about weight. Or you can go the ultralight end, which is um, those ropes typically have a diameter of around nine to 9.3 millimeters. Typically, you're gonna wanna get a thicker rope for top roping and cragging and get a thinner rope for multi-pitch and long approaches because often um, there is a weight correlation with that. You know, this thicker, thinner thing is becoming a little less important as time goes on and the technology changes. Um, you can actually get quite a bit um, thinner ropes with some, with some good durability. Something to be aware of with the thickness of a rope is how different rope diameters could impact your belay device. A thicker rope could uh, may not glide through your belay device very well, so it could result in short roping when lead belaying a climber. Um, and if you have an assisted braking device, a thinner rope may not fully trigger that assisted braking mechanism. One last point to be aware of with thinner ropes is, um, unless you're specifically buying twin or half rope system, which we're not gonna get into um, in this video, you just wanna make sure the rope is rated as a single. Now I mentioned that the thinner ropes are becoming quite durable, and there's different technologies that contribute to this. Um, one example is what's called the endurance sheath. The endurance sheath refers to a tight weave known in the industry as herringbone braiding. There's also advances in materials. So the thick Suriana has um, uses an exterior material that's very smooth and slick. Um, it just glides over surfaces pretty easily. These things, um, the endurance sheath and uh, the slicker surface, increases the rope endurance by about 30%. Something else that actually can increase the rope's durability is uh, what's called a dry treatment. Now, the primary goal of dry treatments is to reduce the rope's absorption of water in uh, circumstances of rain or snow. Dry treatments definitely cost more money um, there's a couple of reasons why people decide to buy ropes with dry treatment. Most obvious one for climbing in wet conditions. Um, a wet rope is significantly weaker under a dynamic load like a fall. It's not really an issue with static loads like rappelling. So if you get caught in a storm and you need to retreat, your rope gets soaked, it's just nothing to worry about. Another reason people buy ropes with dry treatments is because these treatments also actually repel dirt. And by repelling the dirt, it increases the endurance of the, of the sheath. Uh, it gives it, you know, your rope a longer life. In general though, a good way to take care of your rope is just to keep it out of the dirt. Uh, place a tarp underneath it, for example, when belaying. I like to think of dirt as these, just these little fine crystals that are really sharp, like mini knives. One more thing to know about sheaths is what's called sheath slippage. Uh, which is how much the sheath slips over the core of the rope. 
UIA has something to say about this. They don't want to see more than 20 millimeters of slippage between the sheath and the core. You can see here, this rope, the Suriana, uh, did not slip at all in the testing. Sheath slippage is actually one of the things that you want to pay attention to as a rope ages. If you can feel the sheath loose and moving back and forth over the core of the rope, particularly in the midsections of the rope, it's definitely time to retire that rope. Um, we often see she sheath slippage, gotta say that 10 times, <laughs> happening on the ends. Um, in those cases, you can uh, cut off those ends and, and reseal it. Now pay attention to the length of the rope once you start doing that. Okay, that wraps up part one of the rope specs in UIAA standards video. Stay tuned for part two where we get into falls. Part three gets into impact force, dynamic and static elongation, and rope weight and length. So be sure to check those out. If you learned something from this video, we'd love it if you gave it a like and a subscribe to our channel. Go visit us at commonclimber.com where we have monthly online magazine. Hey, thanks for checking us out and happy climbing.